There we go, so I have that in correctly. And so now I want to generate the F values in this column. And the way I do that, uh, I find the easiest way to do that is to create a maximum heat release rate value. And then I can use the built-in Excel max function to highlight this entire column for heat release rate, uh, which may be very long if you have a complex curve. So I get the max heat release rate is 50 kilowatts. So from that, I can go to the F column and I can generate the F values that I need for the uh, ramp function. So if I set F equal to the heat release rate divided by the maximum value that I got, and I want to lock in that max heat release rate cell. So hit enter, and so if I copy these cells down, I get out F values, which represent fractions of the maximum heat release rate. So at time zero, I have F zero, which makes sense. At time 10 seconds, I have 0.2, that's because 10 over 50 is 0.2, or 20% of the max value. At 20 seconds, I have um, the maximum heat release rate, which is, so the F is equal to 1, because 50 over 50 is 1, and so on. We have the different F values there. So I can use this, I find it helpful to type in um, the F values so I don't make a mistake. And so now I can go to the variable uh, folder that I created and I'll edit this uh, edit this FDS file to have that time varying heat release rate. So the first thing I need to change is the maximum heat release rate value. So go back to the calculator. If I have a uh, if, if I have a peak heat release rate of 50 kilowatts divided by a burner area of 0 0.01 I get out 5,000. So this heat release rate per unit area should be 5,000. So that's it for that line. And remember, that's equal to 50 kilowatts in the domain. And if I go down to the burner line here, um, then, oh, sorry, actually, I need to add in one more thing to the surf line. So here I can add in the ramp underscore Q equal to fire ramp. It's very important. If I don't add that in, I will not get the time varying uh, user function. So um, the vent line, I'll actually leave that line alone because that has the geometry and that tells it to use the surf ID burner. So now I can go below this line and type in my ramp lines. So ampersand ramp ID equals, and this should match the string that's here. So fire ramp, next is T equal to zero and F equal to zero. So let me put this next to my spreadsheet so we can see those F values. So what this says is the ramp ID name is fire ramp. At time zero, F should be zero, just like uh, reflected in my spreadsheet. So if I actually copy this line here, I can paste that for a total of six lines, and I can input 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, which corresponds to the uh, the times in, in my time column and the F values I'm just going to copy from here so I'll have 0 0.2, 1.0, uh, 0 0.8, and 0 0.2, and 0. So what this does is tell FDS at time 0 the fraction should be 0, at time 10 the fraction should be 20 percent and so on. So that should be all I need to do is insert the ramp queue parameter with the name of the ramp and then insert as many ramp ID lines as I need to describe my heat release rate curve. So this could get quite long. That's why I find the spreadsheet to be helpful. So if I go ahead and save this and I can run this file, type cmd, cd, desktop, cd uh, variable this time and dir, there's my file, so if I type fds5 uh, in fire.fds. So that should start running if there, are any, if there are no errors there. And I'll let that continue running so I can look at the uh, heat release rate at, um, later on. So the last case that I want to look at is a T squared fire. Here, so T squared fires are commonly used to approximate uh, the growth of some uh, 
some actual fuel that's burning, typically you have some alpha variable. The higher the alpha variable, the quicker uh, the t-squared growth. So shown here, I'm showing a plot of the uh, time in seconds versus heat release rate. And I have a t-squared fire that uses alpha equal to 0 0.0469, which is uh, approximately a fast t-squared fire growth. Um, I also like to use a spreadsheet RAM to generate this. There is a, a t-squared function in FDS, but it's actually not the same t-squared that we're thinking of in fire protection um, and actually is how FDS ramps up it, its fires uh, in default cases and it uses a different method than what I'm going to show here so the first thing I want to do is uh, generate the t-square fire curve so I'm going to go to a different sheet time heat release rate and in here I'm going to input the same 10, 20, all the way up to 50 and the heat release rate that I'm going to be calculating is t squared so I'm gonna put my alpha variable here 0 0.0469 and this is given this equation is given as uh, alpha multiplied by t squared like so so I'm just gonna type that formula here so I should have alpha times t squared and I wanna be sure to lock in the alpha parameter here okay so if I hit enter and copy these cells down, I then have my heat release rate curve uh, T squared fire for a fast growing fire. And then I want to do the same method as before, insert F, uh, which is the fraction, and I want to type the max uh, heat release rate equal to max of this entire uh, set of heat release rates. And of course, it's going to be the one at time 50, the latest time. 117.25. Um, if I want to as well, I can calculate my HRPUA here. That'll be that heat release rate divided by 0 0.01 because that's the area of my burner in meters squared. Enter. So this is my HRPUA line, and we can go ahead and generate the fractions now. So here I'll set this equal to the heat release rate divided by the max heat release rate. Um, not remember, I, I don't use HRPUA because these values are heat release rates and this is the max. So at this point, I'll lock in the max heat release rate cell and I can drag down and I get my uh, function values as shown. So at time 10 seconds, it's 4%, 20 seconds is 16%, and so on, all the way up to 1. Now my peak value, as shown in the figure here, the peak heat release rate value is 1 corresponding to F fraction value of 1. So I can type that into the T squared um, file here. So the HRPUA, put this next to the spreadsheet, HRPUA we calculated as 11725, and that's kilowatts per meter squared. We got that by doing 117.25 divided by 0 0.01. So that's it there. And then we want to add in the ramp Q equal to fire ramp. And you can name that whatever you like. It just has to match this line here. Ramp ID is equal to fire ramp. T equal to 0 and F equal to 0. And again, I can copy this line out. Copy Control C and paste that out with Control V. So I can input my times as 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then the fraction values, again, come from the spreadsheet that I, that I calculated. So 0 at time 0, 0 0.04 at 10 seconds, 0 0 0.6, 0 0.36, 0 0.64, and 1.0. And again, I got these values from the spreadsheet for my fraction. So again, if I go down to the vent line, I do not have to change anything in the vent line um, because that's just the geometry, uh, which is 0 0.01. We've already accounted for that here. So that should be all I need to do. So if I save this file and open a, one more command window, cd desktop, uh, cdt squared, and I can do fds5 roomfire.fds and run that file. 
Okay, so the last thing I want to do is to verify the input heat release rate. So FDS outputs a file called case underscore hr.csv and so you can verify that your output heat release rate is correct because FDS will actually sh tell you what um, what heat release rate is occurring in the domain. So in order to do that, uh, let's pick one of the cases. I'll look at the variable case. And so I have some output files here. Uh, a couple of CSV files is what I'm interested in. And here's the underscore hrr.csv case. So if I double click this, uh, I get a warning because FDS is running and that's okay. I can hit read only and it'll show me what's uh, run up to that point. And I'm actually interested in these first two columns where I have the time in seconds and the heat release rate in kilowatts. And so let me just make this a little easier to read. There we go. And so if I select these first two columns and insert a scatter chart there, okay, we see that uh, this is time on the x-axis and heat release rate in kilowatts on the y-axis. So we see at time zero it was zero, and it ramps up to 10 at 10 seconds, just like we specified for the variable case. And now it's currently ramping up to 50 kilowatts, and it's going to meet that at a time of 20 seconds. So looks like it's working so far. <laughs> of course, we could check this afterwards. Uh, to make sure that it can follow the complete ramp. And another cool thing you do is you can actually plot this output heat release rate over the input heat release rate that we typed in earlier to see how closely they match. And this is something that's commonly done just to make sure that you have the right amount of energy going into the domain. So, in conclusion, uh, we showed how to input different types of heat release rates into FDS from the very simple case, which is a constant heat release rate, you just have to be aware of the actual burner area. The second thing we looked at was the time varying heat release rate, uh, which you can, I like to use a spreadsheet to make life easier and uh, generate those fraction values for me. Uh, and then finally we looked at the T squared, which is similar to the variable heat release rate. We're just using a different design fire curve. So from that, hopefully that helps you to input heat release rates uh, in FDS with some examples.